Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tara and I am a mom of two boys, Lincoln who is three and Lucas who is 11 months. Today's video, I am going to be taking you into my home and showing you the different Montessori spaces that we have created inside our home. Each of the spaces in my home have been created with a purpose. I have thought through how I can modify some certain spaces in my home to make them more accessible to my toddler or my infant, safer for them, and to help them be more independent and self-sufficient. One disclaimer I want to put out is that there are so many different ways to practice Montessori in your home and I personally don't believe that there is one true right or wrong way when you're talking about an at-home Montessori environment. It is going to look different than a school Montessori environment. So this is how our house looks. I'm going to show you what works for us and I hope this gives you some inspiration for your Montessori at-home environment. All right, let's get into the video. If you're interested in seeing our home and our Montessori spaces, then keep watching. All right, we're starting today off in our playroom. So I'm not going to give you a full tour of our playroom today because I am in the middle of doing a like playroom makeover and I plan to have a full tour of the playroom um, on an upcoming video. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss that video. All right, I've moved over to our cube shelves. I wanna give you just a little overview of how we set up our shelves so that they're more Montessori friendly and more accessible to my three-year-old and 11-month-old. One of the things that you'll want in a Montessori playroom environment are shelves that are at your child's height. For instance, I have an 11-month-old who's crawling. It's very important that he's able to just crawl right up to these bottom shelves and access his toys. So that's why at the bottom you'll see here is where I keep his toys and my three-year-old, I mostly keep his toys and activities um, on the upper shelf. In Montessori, a lot of the materials that are used are materials that you'll find in nature, like wood or metals or cloth. So um, you'll see a lot of wood toys and wood bins or baskets. Having trays also helps just to display the activity so the child can just walk right up to the shelf and see what's inside. It's displayed in a way that they can easily take off the tray and bring it down so that they can do the activity. I also try to keep um, a place for everything so that everything can go back to its place. It helps with cleanup um, and with my toddler knowing where things are day to day. Another thing as you can see here is I have, if I do have bins, so for instance, this bin, we have storing our bristle blocks. So I try to find bins that don't fill up the entire cube so that even if there, I do need like a larger bin to hold blocks, it's a bin that when they walk up, they can see right into it. Now, that being said, as you can see here, I do have quite a large bin. This is for our Legos. My son is really, really into Legos right now and they just wouldn't fit in anything smaller. So I keep that at the bottom so he can still easily see what's inside it. But ideally, I like to use bins that are more shallow. Um, even for my 11 month old, something like this is perfect for him to be able to crawl up and see what's inside it. So when it comes to toys in our playroom, um, in the beginning when I was first learning about Montessori, I thought that it meant everything had to be wooden. And I went out and bought like you know, wooden cars and that sort of thing. But I've learned over time that really the more realistic um, the item is, the more Montessori aligned it is. So for instance, instead of buying, you know, a wooden fire truck that really looks nothing like a fire truck, maybe buy the plastic fire truck or try to find a metal one. Um, but one that is more realistic looking is going to be more Montessori, Montessori aligned. And the same thing goes for puzzles or books um, or really anything. And actually, when I was first reading books to my first son when he was a baby, and sometimes I'd have books that had real pictures of animals and sometimes I'd have books that had cartoon pictures. I remember thinking like, am I confusing him? Does he, is he going to know which one is the real animal? So it actually just makes sense to me. Now I've pretty much gotten rid of most of the books 
that have cartoon animals in them. Obviously not all of them, but when it comes to like actually teaching um, the animals to my 11 month old, I try not to confuse him with a bunch of different cartoon animals and try to stick to the books that have the real pictures of the animals. Right, moving over here to the bookshelf, we have placed, I think these are just the Ikea, maybe spice racks, um, but we are using these as a bookshelf. I think they make a great Montessori um, front facing bookshelf. It's really great for the books to be displayed this way because it's easy for children to come up and see which books are accessible. So on our bookshelf, you will see a lot of books that have real images, real images of children, um, animals, I try not to clutter the bookshelf with too many books, however, both of my boys really love reading, so I do keep maybe a little bit more than the average Montessori parent would, um, but that's just what works for our family, so these are the books that we have out this week. All right, that's it for the playroom. Let's move into the bathroom. Right, we're starting off in the half bath downstairs because this is where we spend most of our time. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a tour of what we've done to our half bath to help make it more Montessori friendly. And then I'll show you the boys' bathroom upstairs. One of the things that we have done is set up a little toilet station for my three-year-old. And that is just a little potty that is his size, um, along with a basket of his items. So in here I have his underwear, um, some toilet paper, and some books for him to read. Um, those are potty books. So yeah, this is his little area where he can actually go to the bathroom by himself because this toilet is, you know, a child size, he is able to pull off his pants and his underwear and go to the bathroom all by himself, which I think is great. Over here, I do have one of the potty seats on the hook. Um, we've been working on that a little bit, but it is something that he needs assistance with. So sometimes um, this potty is just a little bit easier since he can do it by himself, but we are working on transitioning to the bigger potty. The next thing I have is at our sink, we have a step stool so that he's able to access the sink by himself. And on the faucet, I've added this little water extender piece. You can get these on Amazon and it just allows the water to come out a little bit closer for little hands that maybe can't reach all the way. And on the wall, I have added a command hook for him so that he is able to have a towel that he can reach and he's not you know trying to reach our towel and actually to be completely transparent the one that we had up here fell off um, I think with him always trying to grab at it and pull it it just caused it to come off so this is the solution that we have where he can access it at his height and now we're having to use it as well until we get a new one replaced but yeah, that is our half bath downstairs and how we've created um, a space just for my toddler so that he can access you know, everything that he needs all on his own. Our upstairs bathroom isn't all that much different than the downstairs bathroom. Um, I have the same sink water extender as we have downstairs and the same step stool. The only difference in here is that we have a drawer with all of Lincoln's like toothbrush and personal care things. So in here he has his toothpaste, his toothbrush, his hairbrush, and some floss right there. So these are all pretty accessible to him um, when he's up on his stool. He just reaches over, opens the drawer, and gets them out. And he um, is at the height now where he can help himself here at the sink. So turning on the water and everything. Guys, the next space is my kitchen. So there's quite a few areas in my kitchen that I have recently changed around so that um, they are more accessible for my toddler and just really more Montessori aligned overall. So let me show you what those are. One of the things that we have in our kitchen is a learning tower. This is great so that my son can easily get to counter height to help make snacks or cook dinner um, without being on a stool that might be a little bit you know shaky um, or not as safe so this is a learning tower is great for um, toddlers who want to help out it gives them that safety and security that they need um, but allows them to help you out which i love at our kitchen table we have the 
Stoke, 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 I'm not really sure how you say that, but we have the Trip Trap High Chair. Um, and I love this high chair because it allows um, children the ease of getting in and out of their high chair easily by themselves. Um, as you can see, we have it set up as a toddler chair and as a traditional high chair. So I love that it can be both. For my 11 month old, we still have him in the traditional high chair setup. Um, often we do take the tray off and push him up to the table so he can be you know, at the table with us. Um, but we do keep the straps on for now. We don't have it set up so that he can get in and out by himself. But I love that when they are ready for that, um, this converts to um, kind of more like a booster height high chair and it also can convert all the way down to just a normal chair so the trip trap has been great for my older son to have independence and not have to struggle with those booster seats and that sort of thing so it's like his own chair he knows that's his next area in our house we have is a weaning table so this is sort of like lincoln's little area in our kitchen um, that's all his this weaning table is just the ikea table i'll link it below but this is perfect for my three-year-old. So it's a little area where he has his snacks. We have a little bowl where I put out his snacks for the day so he can be sort of self-sufficient in that way of getting his own snacks and choosing what he wants, but yet there are snacks I've picked out. Um, it's a place where he can go to prepare his snacks or you, know, you can use this for really anything. Um, I also have a small refrigerator so there are some snacks that need to be refrigerated and he is not able to get in and out of the refrigerator on his own right now so this has been you know a nice little addition um, i repurposed this from being upstairs when i was pumping at night to now just being a little refrigerator that he can use we also have his broom and dustpan and mop and vacuum over here it's great to have these available so that he can um, have some responsibility of cleaning up after himself. So if he spills something, um, you know, that's dry, he can use his broom or the little dustpan to scoop it up. Um, I do usually try to keep out a washcloth or a sponge for him if he's, you know, eating something that could spill or doing something messy. Okay, I'm getting down to toddler height for this one. But the other thing that I've done in the kitchen is create a space for Lincoln's plates and bowls and cups that he can access. So previously, if you see that cabinet way up there, that's where I had all of his plates and cups and bowls. And once we started learning more about the Montessori method, I moved most of his items to this drawer down here. So inside this drawer, we have just his plates, his bowls, and his cups, and this is where he knows that these things are and he can come and get them whenever he wants to get himself a snack or if he's helping with making dinner or something, he knows to come here. I also put his silverware in the drawer above it, so this is accessible to him as well, so a spoon, fork, and knives. And then um, I have bibs in here and placemats. Now Lincoln still asks for bibs for messy things. Um, and he does put out his own placemats a lot so he can also access this drawer. So those are the three drawers that I have made specifically for him and his items. One other area that we have in our kitchen that I almost forgot to include is this cabinet right here. So this cabinet has a lot of the items that my son uses for, you know, really mostly food prep. Um, and he knows where these are and he will come and get them when needed. So a citrus juicer, um, a cherry pitter, his apple slicer. Um, sometimes we like to make smoothie popsicles. So we've got that here and pretty much it but yeah those items are right here and easy for him to grab at his level all right the last room is my son Lincoln's bedroom so this is a toddler bedroom if you are familiar with Montessori you may have seen other Montessori toddler rooms with floor beds and dressing stations however ours is set up more like a traditional toddler bedroom um, we didn't learn about Montessori and start practicing it in our home until my son was two so we had already purchased all of this furniture and I've decided that since he's three there's no point in purchasing additional furniture and we've made 
the traditional furniture work for him. Oh, I'm gonna take you around the room now and show you what we've done to make this room more accessible to him and just more, you know, Montessori aligned. One thing that we have in here that may seem a little bit unconventional is a toddler potty. This is just so that it's easy for him to go to the bathroom in the night if he needs to. So for now, we're keeping it in here. His bed is a traditional crib um, turned into a toddler bed. So we have the toddler rails on it and he can easily get in and out of this by himself now since he's older. So we've kept it exactly how it would be as a traditional toddler bed. Over here we have Lincoln's bookshelf. This is another forward facing bookshelf so that Lincoln can easily access all of his books and see what's on the shelf. And he really is into books so we have another bin down here of some additional books in case these aren't enough. <laughs> he does have a little racetrack in here. And then we have this shelf which we've had for a while um, and what we've done is just we've put anything that he would need to access, make sure that it's low enough for him. So some stuffed animals. This is a little toy box and he's got a Thomas train. Over in this corner is his laundry hamper where he can easily access to put his dirty clothes. Over here we have the traditional nursery dresser. So this still has a changing table on top. Just haven't taken it down yet. We don't use it anymore. Um, his sound machine and some lotion up there. But what I've done is I have made the bottom drawers to be accessible for him here. So in this drawer, we have his pajamas. In this drawer, there's socks and underwear. And I've done the same thing with the clothes in his closet to make sure that those are accessible for him as well to get his shorts and his shirts and that sort of thing. So I've just made sure that all of the items that he would need to access are in low drawers that he can easily get to. The next space that we have is our drop zone. So this area is a place where we have our coats and jackets hung up and instead of having Lincoln stuff way up high up here with our up here with our stuff. I have created a spot that is just at his height. So this is actually one of my favorite quotes by Maria Montessori: "Never help a child with a task at which he feels he can succeed." And I put that here because I think that this is an area where we're always trying to get in and out of the house very quickly, and we forget that children can do so much for themselves. So I have put two hooks here for his hat and his jacket. And then there is a little stool here for him to sit down and have some space to put his shoes on. And then he has his own cubby over here. And what I've made sure to do is only keep out just a few shoes at a time. So only the shoes that he may need. For small children, this may need to be just the shoes that they would need for that day. So, um, you know, you might have to take the rain boots away if you don't want them wearing rain boots every day. But for my three-year-old, he understands the difference between needing rain boots and regular shoes. And we're at a transition right now where we're going from sneakers um, and sandals because it's starting to cool off a little bit. So from sandals to sneakers, <laughs> since it's starting to cool off and we get some rain, so those are his new rain boots. We do have his umbrella over in the corner that he can grab if he needs it. But this has become his station to get ready and have everything exactly where at the height that he needs it. That's it for today's video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content just like this, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.